Hello there, uh, this is Prashant, you uh, strategy consultant back uh, on uh, my channel Ahame uh, Vyaham. I am again uh, bringing you yet another video in the product management series and what we are going to cover is uh, shown on the screen that is there's a concept called as uh, jobs to be done theory. Now this is really a very very beautiful and neat theory uh, proposed uh, and propagated by uh, Clayton Christensen. Uh, and uh, he published it in his book uh, The Innovator Solution back in 2003. Uh, it really picked up momentum and got popularized once again in 2016 uh, when he uh, was uh, a professor at the Harvard University. So uh, uh, long story short, uh, this concept is basically all about uh, trying to getting into the shoes of the customer, the buyer or the end user as to why are they buying your product, trying to understand their needs and wants, their pain points uh, and what will they gain through it. Uh, the story uh, goes uh, so that uh, there was one particular uh, fast food joint uh, which had recently launched a, a, a huge you know, mega size uh, uh, cup of uh, banana milkshake. Uh, which was quite popular with uh, all the passers-by on the road, on that particular route. And uh, what they did to spice up uh, their, their, their product offering and to increase their sales and to in order to cater to the customers in much more better way, they introduced lots of uh, nutritional milkshakes in several different flavors and their sales started dropping suddenly and people who are unable to understand they have done so much of uh, research and development they have invested so much of money uh, what they are trying to offer to the customer is a really nutritious product yet the sales are dropping so they were unable to understand what's what's the root cause behind it uh, so it so happened that uh, clayton christensen uh, took up this particular project of investigating uh, the reason and he started talking to the people who uh, were the regular customers and uh, he interviewed them and asked them uh, why do you uh, purchase this banana milkshake uh, and a lot of customers they answered that uh, it's it's a one and a half hour drive to my uh, office and early in the morning when i have to like start uh, quite early say at 7 7 or 7 30 in the morning uh, i normally skip my breakfast uh, at home so uh, what does uh, this banana milkshake do is it fills my stomach it is uh, good to taste uh, and uh, it basically fills my stomach until i get to my office and uh, grab my uh, 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 some kind of snacks from the pantry or can you or, or until I, I go for the lunch so this was the real reason that the banana milkshake a sumptuous huge glass uh, was much popular by most of the passers-by because they were regular office goers who had to skip their breakfast and they just needed something to fill their stomach. So they were really not interested uh, in, in uh, uh, nutritional products or different uh, trying out different flavors. Uh, that was not the objective at all of the customer. So the, look, so what uh, Clayton did was he actually got into the customer's shoes and understood the real reason and what was the job to be done here. All that the customer wanted was something really good to taste and heavy to fill their stomach until they reach their office. That was all what was needed. And then so it happened that they went back uh, to the, the regular banana milkshake and withdrew all the other nutritional and uh, different flavored products and the sales picked up, picked up once again. So that's this whole thing, uh, this whole concept in a nutshell, although there are many variants to it, uh, there are many different angles and perspectives, so I wouldn't go uh, into detail in it, maybe uh, at some later date. So let's begin with today's video. I've display, displayed some of the unique projects that I've undertaken in my uh, two decade of uh, career. Uh, the first one is about co-creation where uh, I had to redesign a heavy duty demolition hammer to suit end user requirements. And this is what I'm going to cover in this video today, uh, wherein the, the, the whole redesign was based on the theory of jobs to be done, as proposed by Clayton Christensen. 
and yeah this this project was done about over it's it's it was done over a decade ago and uh, then uh, one of the other co-creation projects that I've done is reprogramming of the PLC or the programmable logic controller of high pressure cleaner for better human machine interaction uh, another project that I've taken up uh, is in the area of operational ex excellence specifically Six Sigma uh, where I was able to reduce rework or rejection by 50% uh, by implementing this particular business case and Another one was uh, again about operational excellence, uh, specifically about responsible sourcing, uh, where I developed a benchmarking and as did assessment of factories for uh, responsible sourcing. And last but not the least, I took up a project in life coaching where uh, I was responsible for improving employee productivity via uh, a trademarked technique called Minds. So uh, let's begin with this. As mentioned earlier, uh, this was a co-creation uh, project uh, with the involvement of the JTBD or the jobs to be done theory. Uh, the client or the partner, basically it was a vendor partner, uh, DW, uh, which is a top power tools uh, manufacturer in the world. The project uh, uh, description is the redesign of heavy duty demolition hammer to suit end user requirements. The specific skills applied in this project are uh, listed on the screen. Uh, the business part involves problem solving techniques, design thinking, jobs to be done, and empathy mapping. Uh, the technical part covers human machine interaction, human factors, engineering, and industrial tooling. So as you can see, again, this is a multi-skilled, uh, uh, this project has multi-skilled requirements ranging from operational excellence to product management to engineering design. Uh, the estimated time to completion was six weeks and the team size was uh, five. Uh, which involves subject matter experts, design engineers, and end users. I've divided this video into three sections. Number one, beginning with the problem, trying to understand what the problem is. Second is the solution part, the solutioning part. And last but not the least is the forward part. So let's begin with it. Let me start with the background. Uh, DW is a European company and a leading manufacturer of power tools and other industrial solutions. Uh, it has a major dominance in the East African market uh, where I did this project. One of the major segments they serve is the construction industry. Uh, and they have a wide range of tools and equipment like handheld power drills, grinders, cutters, heavy duty hammer drills, demolition hammers, chipping hammer kit, pavement breakers, diamond tipped uh, abrasives, titanium drill bits and other consumables. So they have a huge range. And hammers, breakers, and the associated consumables contribute to almost 40% of the total revenue in the region. Let's have a look at the problem statement. Uh, they have recently launched a new model of uh, demolition hammer uh, almost about a year ago. And uh, it, this was in order to fulfill the market demand since the construction industry or, or the infrastructure development business was booming in the region. However, since the last one year, one year after the launch of this new particular product, uh, there were several concerns raised by the customers on this product and consequently the sales uh, dropped for this particular product line. And as a result, the competitor brands were quickly uh, gobbling up the market share and the management was perplexed uh, because they were unable to resolve the issue of the sales drop in a, such a sudden manner. If you are a product manager or a marketing professional, uh, you would have heard of uh, this concept of Porter's Five Forces Analysis. So to analyze the problem, because since this was uh, an issue related to the sales and the market share, uh, we started with Porter's Five uh, Forces Analysis, which, is, uh, which basically covers rivalry among existing competitors, bargaining power of suppliers, bargaining power of buyers, threat of substitute products, and threat of new ent entrants. So we uh, conducted a detailed study of the market and realized that there was zero threat from uh, new entrants because it's, it's basically a saturated market because the, the uh, East African market is, is basically based on imports and all the big players are already in the market. So, so even if there are any new entrants, they are not going to pose any challenge over there as far as branded products are concerned. Um, Regarding bargaining power of buyers, it's, it's very, very low because it's basically a, sub, a supplier driven market. That is, it's an import based economy and the threat of substitute products is none because uh, this particular brand of power tools 
<coughs> sorry it serves the premium segment so it is only the reputed uh, construction companies and infrastructure uh, businesses that go for this brand and uh, as far as the bargaining power of suppliers is concerned it is very very high because it's basically a import based economy of the entire entire nation there's there's nothing uh, rarely i mean uh, uh, nothing seldom anything is manufactured in in this region so it's all based on import and when you talk about rivalry amongst uh, existing competitors yes uh, there were two major competitors eyeing for the market share and that's the reason they were gobbling up the market share when the sales were dropping so uh, so far so good but this particular analysis didn't lead us to any particular specific reason as to why this is happening and how to tackle it so what we tried to do is uh, we did some kind of uh, a little bit of reverse engineering that is assuming that uh, we kind of went back in timeline that uh, assuming that there's a, we are going to introduce this project uh, this particular product the new new uh, 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 design of uh, demolition hammer so we assume that it's not yet been launched and if it was going to be uh, about to be launched then uh, what would uh, we look for so we did a kind of uh, simple swot analysis <coughs> which is basically from the marketing perspective uh, with with uh, the motive of reason to believe for success so what is going to work for the product and what is going to uh, go against the product so as you can see on the screen the strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats are listed out uh, the strengths and opportunities where it's a new to the world product because this particular kind of model did not exist in the uh, east african market earlier uh, premium pricing for premium customers that's also a strength uh, it's and uh, this particular brand had a tie up with the largest diy hardware store in east africa a uh, lot of digital campaigning uh, and out of home advertising uh, was planned and was already done uh, and a uh, lot of other things uh, the atl and vtl activities were ongoing uh, uh, during the launch of this product so we covered all of those points uh, then we had a look at a uh, few other opportunities that could have or could turn out to be uh, weaknesses one of the reasons was new design not matched by competitors so how is the customer going to perceive it because it's a first of its kind right so it need not necessarily <coughs> have a positive uh, outcome and uh, low bargaining power of the buyers uh, there is very little the buyers can do uh, because since it's a import based economy so whatever is available in the market they have to go with it even if they are from the premium segment uh, as far as the threats are concerned yes there were threats from copycat products counterfeiting and stiff competition as mentioned earlier by two other major brands but uh, the root cause we arrived uh, very quite close to the root cause that the product application training there was something lacking in that and there were a lot of customer complaints so we try to dig further in this particular region so uh, we got something on our hands to work with uh, so we began the uh, evaluation of alternatives uh, we had a thorough look at the pricing and the placement and we realized that since this is a premium segment product and obviously it is a high quality product there was no question of working around the pricing because you can't sell a high quality premium product at a lower price and it this particular brand of portals was the market leader since the last one decade so there, there was no question about any pricing issue or uh, placement issue uh, then we had a look at the promotion part and uh, we realized that we have used lot of channels digital channels out of home advertising and since this is a construction industry and it's it's basically industrial tools and equipment uh, rarely some kind of off the shelf or sales or retail sales happen it's basically consultative sales where project engineers uh, discuss uh, with 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 uh, uh, with the sales guys right so there was no issue regarding the promotion also so where was the problem so we had a deeper look at the product itself and uh, what was told was that the design tweak was done after thorough research and development i mean there, there was lots and lots of uh, money uh, that was spent on research and development to introduce this product this was one of its kind product so then we thought let us have a, a design review from the end user point of view 
Let's have a look at the solution now. As you can see on the screen, the solutioning uh, is displayed as to how we arrived at the solution. Number one, there was the demolition hammer sales drop. Number two, there was fierce competition from the brands uh, for this particular product line. And number three, there were n number of customer complaints in the way that were increasing day by day. And all these three reasons were re leading to the decline in market share. So we thought of doing a redesign of the demolition hammer itself based on HMI and HFE principles. That is human machine interaction and human factors engineering. So I'm not going to cover these topics in this video, maybe in some other video, some other time. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the solution. Let's take a step back and uh, let us see what we did in the jobs to be done part. Uh, the expectations uh, of the uh, company, the manufacturer, the brand and the dealer were quite different and we actually got a reality check when we tried to see from the uh, perspective of the end user. The product is obviously demolition hammer, the intended purpose is uh, vertical drilling and the basic usage is that you have to uh, grab the handlebar with both your hands uh, firmly, place the hammer vertically uh, on the surface uh, that you want to uh, drill or break and uh, you have to place it at the center of the area where you want to do the drilling or the breaking activity. Then you can select the desired program and just press the trigger to power it on. Now the special features uh, in this product where that it had a very nicely ergonomically designed handlebar uh, which was good for your grip as well as did not uh, give uh, 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 much stress to your shoulder and pector muscles uh, the hammer drill motion was designed as per cfd or computational fluid dynamics so you can imagine cfd modeling so you can imagine the amount of uh, uh, money involved in the research and development for the design of this particular product. Uh, there were three programs uh, as per the surface type and the force or the impact energy required and it had uh, uh, it came with an electronic trigger so that there was no issue of the switch or the button uh, 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 being quite difficult to press while in motion or it uh, kind of uh, not working or malfunctioning during the motion. <coughs> So the expected end user feedback was that I've got the best drilling experience ever. But did that happen? Absolutely no. What happened was the customers complained, that is the end users, they complained that it's uh, quite heavy. Uh, it hurts the shoulders and the low power mode is not available. So we were actually perplexed as to what we had designed uh, was the one of the best models we had actually come up with. I mean, the company uh, had come up with and we were getting these kind of strange complaints from the end users so you can see the image on the uh, top right corner of the screen this was our conclusion that our product is say this much and it's serving a particular purpose but the job to be done could be much bigger than that much bigger than our product so we again tried to further investigate as to what was happening we went to the field we went to our customers who had bought or purchased the products and we went to observe what they were doing without informing them you can see in this on the screen uh, on the left hand side there is the intended use how this particular uh, demolition hammer is supposed to be used uh, as mentioned you know, hold it it firmly with both your hands uh, keep it vertical and place it at the center of the surface to be drilled but what the uh, construction workers were doing in this particular region this is supposed to be a demolition hammer it's it's quite heavy uh, it's uh, almost 22 kgs in weight and the impact energy is 45 joules so it's really really heavy duty it can demolish any kind of surface whether made of rcc concrete or even stones because uh, this uh, could also be used as a pavement breaker so uh, they were actually using it uh, by holding it onto their shoulders in 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 a vertical manner and trying to uh, demolish the walls and pillars and why was this happening 
ट्रेडिशनली हाउ वॉज दी वॉल्स एंड पिलर्स डेमोलिस्ट दी एज ओल्ड फैशन इज टू यूज अ सिंपल हैमर एज शोर इन द पिक्चर people would use hammer and it would be a very tedious work you know you work 8 hours and then you are able to partially demolish a section of a wall if it's a huge uh, uh, area and then came the uh, vertical hammer drills that is also shown on the screen but then these vertical hammer drills are not actually used for demolition uh, they are just uh, for kind of partial uh, repair or restoration kind of work so uh, in this region there was lot of renovation and restoration work that was going on in full swing and there was uh, there was a series of projects which were which was about low cost housing projects under the united nations development program uh, for for east africa so there were lot of low cost houses that were already built uh, they had to be demolished and rebuilt or renovated so uh, hand tools hammer drills were used for partial demolition of walls there was there were certain places where the entire uh, structure was not being demolished but only partially uh, the, the demolition was done so uh, it was difficult to use earth movers cranes and other huge equipment one was the cost factor second was that uh, there was no need of doing a full demolition and when you use this big equipment big and heavy equipment like earth movers and cranes uh it's very uh, difficult to control the the uh, area being impacted like suppose uh, you want to demolish only one particular partition in a series of row houses you can't uh, use a earth mover or a crane uh you need to have some other equipment and since there was no equivalent equipment in this particular region they were using this uh, demolition hammer which is supposed to be used vertically they were using it horizontally by placing it on their shoulder to do this kind of demolition work sometimes these kind of investigations are really interesting uh, you can see the design solution on your screen so what we had to do you know we had to actually analyze the reason now what do we do with this because the sales are already dropping we have lost a certain amount of market share and the competitors are catching up a product recall of this uh, heavy duty demolition hammer was not feasible and uh, to introduce a light duty hammer drill that could be used you know uh, uh, horizontally could take up to 2 years for market entry you know right from the r&d to the product design to manufacturing to getting the approvals and then uh, all those formalities and procedures so what uh, we came up with was to repurpose and redesign of the existing product which was uh, the most cost effective solution in this case so what we did was uh, that the existing uh, demolition hammer was fitted with a shoulder rest as shown on the screen uh the uh, image on the top right corner then it had uh, we introduced a low power mode switch where uh, uh, the the required power could be lowered uh, and the impact uh, of the uh, 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 demolition hammer could be reduced or uh, varied uh, and uh, we also provided uh, a vacuum tripod as 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 an accessory so that uh, people could actually place the tripod Uh, as a support for the uh, bar of the, uh, 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 the 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 demolition hammer so these were the minor modifications done and uh, the product was uh, reintroduced in the market and it was a huge success after that and uh, just one uh, word of caution or note that since this project was done uh, almost over a decade ago i really don't have the actual pictures what is shown on the screen is are uh, just dummy pictures so that you can get the idea of what was actually given as a solution over there the project delivery kpis are on the screen uh, it was completed in 6 uh, weeks as per the schedule uh the end user beta program uh, uh gave us a 100% rating for the user acceptance testing obviously the client was benefited because earlier there were 24% drop in annual sales and 9% of market share was lost uh after reintroducing the same product with these minor tweaks uh there were uh, the the, the year on year sales increased by 30% and almost up to 12% of market share was gained so it was a kind of win win situation in a very very cost effective manner so far so good so let's have a look at what's the forward path 
as I always mention, no matter what kind of product, project, product or program it is, there is always a problem to solve. There is always a solution. Obviously, there are more than one solutions. So there's always an optimum solution. And after the solution, there is always got to be a forward path. So uh, what uh, did we learn after completing this project was uh, there was a new uh, product development prerequisites policy formulated with this particular brand wherein some of these five things were made mandatory a ground report to be shared with the research and development or design team before initiating any management of change project you know when there are some new things introduced or even there are any design tweaks it's called as management of change so before initiating any such moc project a ground report uh, has to be shared with the r&d or design team that was made mandatory uh, that empathy mapping and user journey mapping for major design projects was uh, made mandatory to be undertaken. Uh, mandatory uh, review of historic data that is end user or customer complaints to be shared with the team. Mandatory market specific user acceptance testing or beta program uh, to be conducted prior to launch of any product and compulsory product application training to 100% of the dealers. So these five things were made compulsory as part of the new product development prerequisites policy and it was it was really uh, uh, worth uh, the learning so far so good guys uh, thank you all for staying with me for so long uh, please keep watching uh, my channel ahame vyaham please uh, like share and subscribe to my channel and videos and i'll close this video with uh, my own quote irrespective of your skills Providing the optimum solution is of foremost importance as a management consultant. Take care. Ciao.